Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the fourth generation of the Hyundai Tucson. This is the key of the vehicle. This is to lock the car. This is to unlock the car. This is to open the boot of the vehicle. And this is to turn on the car. We'll try that. Before that, let me keep this button pressed. And when I do that, you can see the front windows actually roll down. But the rear windows do not and the sunroof also does not open. The car will still be okay. It actually unlocks the car. Obviously, I'm pre pressing the unlock button. It has to unlock the car. So what we will do is we'll lock the car. Okay. We will run away because we can. We will take a U-turn. We'll come back with the key. And let's see if the boot actually opens. So here we are. Okay. All I have to do is stand behind. There opens the boot of the vehicle. It's a power tailgate, of course. So now let's just shut this because we are going to turn on the car with the key which happens with a lot of Hyundai cars now so let this shut and then we lock this car this is actually a bit slow although you can tweak the speeds but this is the fastest right now anyways here we lock the car we're going to keep this button pressed and there the car turns on how cool is that this is actually a very nice feature but the door is locked so we're going to unlock it power windows will not work at all no 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 so what we'll have to do is we will have to actually shut the vehicle and there once we do that let me shut the door the car is off you see the seat is actually moving ahead. So what you're going to do is we are going to be opening the engine bay of this vehicle, which means I'm just going to pull this and yeah, let's put the lights on high beam as well. Okay, you can see it shows me that the hood is open there. It also shows me that the door is open. So this has multiple functions, which is quite nice. I mean, it takes the space of the tachometer, but never mind. It actually shows you taco reading when you need it. So straight away, we are going to be opening the engine bay, which is actually quite heavy. This is really very heavy. There's insulation there. It says DOHC 16 valve, smart stream. There's a lot of space in the engine bay. This is actually the petrol. That's why it's very silent and refined. Anyways, the design is quite nice. It's very aggressive. You get this dark chrome grille, which looks very nice indeed. And a huge Hyundai logo. This is the front camera. You get front parking sensors. You get a towing hook. This is the panel for the ADAS system. And you can see this is the low beam. This is the high beam. So the main lights are placed here. Meanwhile, these are actually the DRLs. That is the indicator. And this merges into the grille to give you a very nice sort of effect. They call it the parametric grille. Fantastic, really like it. Now coming to the side of the vehicle, this is decently long. In fact, the wheelbase is 2755 mm, which is 85 mm longer than the third generation of the Tucson. And you know what? This is actually the long wheelbase version of the Tucson, which is sold in the Indian market. You can see this is also quite edgy and the tire size happens to be 235-60-18s. Yeah, so globally you get 19 inch wheels and the end line version gets really sexy looking wheels there. There is a camera here, of course. That is the indicator. Request sensor is there on both the sides. You can see the cuts and creases, like lots of cuts and creases. And this line actually runs like this, which kind of gives it sort of a coupe look. <laughs> yeah, you might see a lot of Lamborghini Urus here. The thing is, you get a shark fin antenna there. Rear wiper and washer, where is it? It's actually hidden right below there. So very much like a Range Rover, you get a high mounted stop lamp. The Hyundai logo is actually placed here on the glass. And again, the rear design is quite nice. You get these two T-shaped lights and then a connecting bar in between as well. Again, all LEDs, but not really because the reverse light is not LED. The indicator is not LED. And then you've got rear parking sensors. Of course, you get a rear parking camera as well. Faisal Khan's fingers of truth will always hunt for the exhaust, which is actually placed here. So yeah, the exhaust is hidden. Single exhaust, which is kind of funny considering the Alcazar with the same engine has dual exhaust, which are very much visible somewhere there. Okay, now let's get inside. I was telling you now, request sensor is placed here. Well, that's a good thing. Now, the thing is that space here seems quite nice. But before that, we should look at the boot, which means I have to actually press a button here and there opens the boot of the vehicle. Boot is decent size. It's actually 540 liters. Parcel shelf is open, so we are just going to shut it for the moment. This is not what you think it is, okay? You get a 12 volt charging socket, you get a light placement here, and you also get a full size spare wheel. That's right, a full freaking size spare wheel there. There's the jack, I don't know where Rose is. The thing is that the diesel model actually does not get a full size spare wheel. It gets a space saver instead. Now, if you want to recline the seat, very easy. You pull this and there the seat actually reclines. <laughs> That's easy. So if you want to carry a house, you can do that as well. Press this button, there shuts the boot. I wish it was a little faster. We just stop it like this here. Oh, stop. I am trying to stop you. Yeah. Yeah, there it's going back up. This is a thing. I don't know. You have to put a card or something in case this doesn't open. 
I don't know what it is. If you know, please do let me know. Anyways, in white color, this car looks really nice. Says Tucson there, but doesn't have any badging in terms of the variant or the engine or something of that sort. Anyways, this is where the fuel goes. This is a large, big mosquito. Uh, I got scared, ran away. Anyways, here is what it says: two liter GLS A6. This thing only Hyundai understands. We really don't. Anyways, door pockets are not that big. You can keep one bottle here. Gloss black finishing. Nice treatment here. Again, quite premium. However, there's no sun blind here. The Alcazar actually gets it. Let's just push this up. Okay, you can see the seat is very upright. It's super upright. However, you can actually recline the seats. Okay, by using this lever. This will actually put it down as well, and then you can put it up too. Now, in order to do that, I just have to push it like this. And the recline angle is absolutely crazy. Look at that recline angle. Isn't that mind-blowingly mad? Yeah, very much crazy recline. And this is upright where you can't sit only because it's way too upright. You get a uh, yeah center armrest with twin cup holders, massive panoramic roof, and six airbags. Says airbag here. Thing is, the seat is too behind. How do you sit comfortably here? No problem. Firstly, let me get inside. Now it has got buttons right here with which I can move the angle of the front co-passenger seat and also move this seat ahead. I'd actually put the seat all the way behind intentionally. Now when I'm pushing it ahead, I realize there is way good amount of leg room and knee room. Yeah, under thigh support is okay. It's not that great because the seat is actually low. So that headroom is good and headroom is decent enough for someone as tall as me. Obviously, the seat is reclined. When the seat is upright, headroom will get a bit compromised as well. There's a light placement here, handle to hold on to. Seat belts get the height adjust function at the front. AC vents are placed here, but you cannot control the blower speeds. USB Type A plugs are regular USB. No USB C in this car, which is quite surprising. Scooped out seat back a little bit. There's a magazine holder here. Same is the case there as well. And you get Isofix child seat mounts. Everyone gets a head and proper seat belts as well. So yeah, there's a proper seat belt for the middle passenger too, which is a nice thing. I really like it. The dashboard looks fantastic. Okay, the thing is, it's very similar to what we've seen in the Alcazar as well as the Creta, but the quality of materials are just so much better now. now. Let's do one thing. Let's get inside. Since the key is in my pocket, it makes this ringing sound. Tee! Shanti, I'm coming. Okay, it says key not in vehicle inside. So that place actually gives you a lot of information and warnings, which is kind of cool. Door pockets are big enough at the front. Okay, again, piano black finishing here. One touch up, down. Oh my God. Yeah, but that is only for the front windows. Okay, this is to unlock and unlock the vehicle. These are the controls for, you know, adjusting the outside rear view mirrors. This is for the child lock. Nice material here. Both the front seats are actually powered. That one is obviously powered because I was moving it with those buttons. And you get memory function for the driver's seat. So you can save up to two people's settings as well. Seats are really very nice and comfortable. You get this sort of a, you know, chrome finish here on the seat, which is a premium touch, of course. Really nice seats. I really like it. You get a proper dead pedal there. This is to open the boot of the vehicle. This is for traction control. This is for the headlight leveler. See the finishing on the levers. Oh my God, nerd finishing with piano black. Super duper awesome attention to detail. The quality levels that will actually blow your mind. And this is obviously to adjust the seat of the vehicle, the front seat that is. Yeah, because electric adjust for the win. That material is actually carried forward here as well. The glove box is not really very big. It's decent size, but doesn't get a cooling function. And hard touch here, but soft touch in other places. That's where the quality actually speaks. Here you get an auto dimming mirror. Okay, light placement here on the top. Here you get a mirror and a light, but you have to individually operate it and then you can push it out and then you can extend it as well, which is kind of cool. Yeah, same is the case on the driver side as well. So you can pull it out, you can extend it from here and the light has some sort of a, yeah, we removed it, but we'll put it back, never mind. But come on, both should have operated together simultaneously. Quality and fit finish is actually very impressive here. And then you get a center armrest, which is decent sized. A lot of buttons here and there. We'll come to that in a bit. The thing is that there's only one switch to operate the sunroof. Okay, which means you have to give a very light tap to open the sun blind. And the sun blind opens at a very fast pace. Okay, that's about it. That's how much it opens. The thing is the sunroof or either the panoramic roof is big enough. Brings in a lot of airy feeling here. That is also shutting at the moment. Now, if I want to just open this, just see. Okay, I have to operate it very softly. And then look at the speed at which it opens. It's very fast. It's not slow by any means of imagination. So that's a nice thing. Plus, obviously, it has got anti-pinch function, which means that if I put my hand here, it will not shut. It will identify there's something and, you know, there you go. 
Okay, that's a basic feature and it's not going to open completely. I have to press it once again to, oh my God, sunroof, stop, 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 stop. So, you know, I think independent buttons would be really very cool, but this is a problem which I faced with the Creta as well. Now, the thing is, beautiful screen, beautiful screen, nice steering wheel, which is adjustable both for reach as well as rake. And let's use the horn. Horn is nice and loud as well. Now, you can see the instrument cluster is a 10.25 inch unit. It's very good in terms of the quality of this. And you can see this cube design, which I can change. Okay, there are multiple modes for this. So, here you see. Now, you can link it to the drive mode and depending on the drive mode, it will actually change as well. And it's very easy to browse because Hyundai makes things so easy. Here, there's a compass, there's a tire pressure monitor. It tells you like, are you attentive enough and all that as well. Super nice, gives you driver information and all that. Pretty cool, huh? And when you use the indicator, it also shows you the lane watch camera on both the sides. But if you notice one thing, when it is superimposing on the speedometer, it's showing you zero kilometers per hour edge. It's also showing the tachometer in digital format. Although this is completely digital, it makes sure you get the readings too. And then obviously it's telling you what is the fuel efficiency like, what mode and like very informative indeed. And this is obviously the control for the wipers. It gets automatic wipers. It gets automatic headlights as well. And like I was telling you, the finishing of this is just super duper awesome. Oh my God, there is so much spray on offer. Wipers work really well. We are going to use the rear wipers now. And there you can see the hidden wiper comes out and then you can use that. Okay, oh my God, there is so much spray now. It is going to make the whole car wet. <clears throat> That's what she said. So let's come to this screen. This is again is a 10.25 inch screen. Beautiful, very nice in terms of quality. The usual Hyundai bits, which means you get valet mode, quiet mode. You get Hyundai's fantastic blue link connected car tech as well. You get maps, which are actually very good. Okay, check the quality of the maps. And then, you know what? You can also get split view here. So you can see multiple things at once. Very nice. Okay, Hyundai is doing amazing screens. There is no two ways about it. We are going to get into settings. You're going to get into vehicle because here I can get into lights and show you that ambient lighting is fantastic. You can link it to drive modes or you can change the ambient light color from here. So we get into custom color and you see there are 64 colors for the ambient light as well. But honestly, for me, what is the most impressive is the camera. Look at that camera. Okay, 360 degree view here. You can zoom it in and zoom it out and it, it has got adaptive guidelines of course and then there are multiple views for the camera there's a top view there's a front view back view side view all that is also there which is kind of cool here i get into reverse and it makes this sound by the way when it gets into reverse it also shows you the parking sensor here now there are plenty of buttons here this is actually for the seat ventilation for the co-passenger seat and this is for heating so you can only use one at one time obviously same is the case here for the driver as well so this works quite nice here are a lot of buttons this is for parking sensor this is for the parking camera electric parking brake auto hold function and downhill assist right and this gear lever actually comes from the creta i think <laughs> because globally the tucson actually has buttons this car does not twin cup holders here and let's just put the gear lever there there is a wireless charging pad right there space to keep your phone there's a 12 volt charging socket there and regular usb another regular usb this will actually connect to apple carplay and android auto which is not wireless here by the way these are the controls for the air conditioning sort of touch as well it gets dual zone climate control air conditioning this is a fingerprint magnet because obviously it's piano black but the air conditioning works fantastically well it has another mode called diffuse so that air will flow out much more smoother so that's again some amount of attention detail from hyundai you see it has this continuous ac vent treatment which looks quite nice as well and then you know this screen is fantastic like i really love the way hyundai is doing screens in its cars just the quality of it is so good even the instrument cluster's quality just amazing now, buttons also feel so good now these are actually for the audio system and this is for voice commands and this star you can assign to whatever you feel like these are for the cruise control system now this is to browse through the multi-information display it has got lane keep assist you can decide for the adaptive cruise control what is the distance you want to maintain with the car ahead it's also got an eight speaker bose audio system audio quality is fantastic listen to this <laughs> Yeah, and everything is so easy to operate. These buttons are like having that tactile feel to it. And the steering also feels nice to all. It feels sort of remind you of Audi cars because that's the design which Hyundai is doing in almost all of its cars. Like the Creta has something similar. I should turn off the car because when I turn off the car, it will show me information. Okay, and here, let me open the door. It tells me to check rear seats. This will go back. Now, I will actually turn off the car. You know why? Because when I turn on the car, it shows this nice graphic. Okay, it's like a cool one here. We have locked the car. 
the windows or either the outside rear view mirrors this shut you can see that is for the blind spot monitor to tell you if there's someone in your blind spot yeah it does this whole swipe thingy it shows you this hyundai logo and this sound effect it's quite nice huh let's get going all right we all set to go which means turning off the air conditioning and we get into drive mode here and we put the gear lever into sport as well sport or manual whatever you want to call it change the drive mode to sport 2 and here we change the layout to the cube one because that's kind of cool here we turn off the traction control just a touch of a button and it happens and we change this to show the adas displays as well left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator revving the motor hazard lights off and off we go It does pull very smoothly. So this is a 2 litre turbo. No turbo actually. 2 litre. Oh, there it's saying collision warning. So it has functions work really well in this car. So you would expect this to be a turbocharged engine. No, it's not. It's a naturally aspirated engine. In fact, the engines are actually carried over from the third generation Tucson, which means a 2 litre turbocharged diesel engine, which produces a crazy 186 horsepower and 416 Newton meters of torque mated to an 8-speed torque converter gearbox that is of course the version to buy but this one is the petrol which is a 2 liter naturally aspirated engine producing 156 horsepower and 192 newton meters of torque since it's not turbocharged that mid-range pull is not there of turbocharged engines so low end is very nice it's kind of peppy lower down the rev range but mid-range kind of feels flat and then top end it kind of pulls nicely but becomes very vocal in the top end of the rev range here you can see this cube display is kind of different there it is telling me that there's someone in my blind spot so ADAS functions are a dime a dozen like lane watch camera is so nice it's fantastic and then obviously if someone is in my blind spot it actually tells me by glowing red the mirror of course here you see yeah there it's blinking and telling me as well it has got uh, lane keep assist lane departure warning forward collision warning automatic emergency braking rear cross traffic alert so all of the systems which are actually very well calibrated for the Indian market now this petrol engine is not made into an 8 speed automatic gearbox it's made into a 6 speed torque converter automatic gearbox there is no manual gearbox on offer so we'll just change this mode here it's kind of very nice the way it blinks and you know changes it says keep hands on the steering wheel when you leave the steering wheel that's also kind of cool and then the car will start drifting okay it doesn't even drift like that so now when it is going there it's actually pulling me back in and telling me keep hands on the steering wheel here for your santushti I've done that as well and then yeah it pulls me back into a lane it shows me all that very nicely done system i really like it onto the throttle response is very lackluster i would say it doesn't pull as strongly as you would expect so a bit slow in that regard this engine is not as popular as like you would expect it to be because people will obviously buy the diesel i'm saying that this engine should be popular because obviously the pricing is much more aggressive with the petrol engine the diesel just has that grunt it just feels better to drive it's also stiffer in terms of the way the chassis has been set up not really the chassis but the suspension has been set up it's stiffer and much more fun to drive but this car is not really fun to drive it's more softly sprung more for comfort ride and ease of driving in fact the steering is super light at low speeds and then you know typical hyundai fashion it does weigh up at high speeds which is nice but it's not very quick and reactive a steering wheel and the chassis itself is also not very quick and reactive it's like rigid enough for it to give you a good high speed stability but this car for the most part is all about comfortable driving there is quite a lot of body roll and there's a drag race happening between these two trucks and when people tell me an overtake from the right from which right should i overtake over his head or what these people now they always drive in the right lane these truck drivers they never move they catch that lane and they're like bas ab hamari hogi and there that s cross is actually left from the left lane let's not talk about traffic rules right now let's just change the instrument cluster mode because we can the thing is uh, what i'm trying to imply is that uh, you know making a quick overtake getting onto the throttle is not as fun here because there's not that instant response which you would expect and you know what really does down the whole experience is the gearbox this gearbox is a bit slow shifting so it's slow in terms of upshifts it's slow in terms of downshifts and then we have three drive modes on offer one is eco mode which does the performance there's a normal mode which is a blend of eco and sport of course and there's sport as well and right now we're driving sport overall refinement is very good at low speeds but once you pick up the pace now that refinement levels do go for a bit of a toss as well anyways on is nice so we are going to come to halt brakes are actually quite good but because of the soft suspension there's that nose dive which you encounter hazard lights on and now i'm going to change the cluster mode here to the classic one left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator hazard lights off and off we go first gear almost 55 
second gear it does almost 90 but you can see it's a bit slow to make the shifts it's not very fast with shifts and you know when that lane watch camera comes that tachometer is still showing me the reading there yeah that's kind of cool so the the whole tech in this car really blows your mind it's absolutely fantastic i think this white one looks good but what we'll do is we'll link this to the drive mode itself and we will come out of this even the way the whole thing comes nice so cool now let me just put the map view here because we do not have a driver rear view monitor that amio is in a big hurry today for sure anyways the ride is really very nice especially the petrol now because softer suspension softly sprung it doesn't have to take care of that additional weight of a diesel engine so ride is very smooth and it's a very nice riding car and because there's good amount of sidewall as well with the tires so ride quality is fantastic and high speed stability is decent it's not bad at all i think the diesel will be better because it'll be stiffly sprung to take care of that weight at the front so that softness is there throughout both the variants but the petrol is a bit softer which really helps in terms of low speed ride and then you know body roll is plenty here and the steering is not very sharp or reactive so this is a car which you would really enjoy driving sedately in the city now you will never complain about the performance you will never ever complain about uh, you know uh, the body roll because obviously not go at speeds where you will encounter body roll neither will you compare uh, like com plain about the gearbox because the gearbox is fine for lower speeds it's just that you know when you want that aggressive ness of shifts now there is where it starts to lack which is a bit unfortunate because you would expect it to be much faster in terms of shifts you no know, this gearbox doesn't excite that much and then there are no paddle shifters here either so that's also a bit of a bummer although i can manually take control of the gears here let me actually slow down the speed a bit and then maybe get into uh, second gear and see how does it perform will it hold on to a gear Oh my god it shows me the warning inside the tachometer i cannot read it please don't do that i don't know uh, what it does in second gear because of the stupid reduced speed warning coming there okay so what you're going to do is we're going to turn on the blind spot camera and see whether it intervenes no it doesn't intervene we have to actually come down a gear right now so slow down a bit and then here into second oh my god it overrides the lane watch camera that's a bit of a bummer that said uh, let's see what it does in third gear here we are but i uh, suspect it is going to come up with another reduced speed warning so you can't really see what the red line of this car is yeah that's a bit of an issue never mind we shall try that in first to see at what it red line i think it red lines around 6 6500 rpm yeah 6500 rpm where it red line then becomes a little bit vocal you can hear the engine a bit but overall insulation levels are quite nice you can't hear much of uh, you know outside that is the level of refinement and globally obviously you've got hybrid as well as plug in hybrids also with this car and in china this is actually known as the tucson l the long wheelbase version is known as the tucson l that's kind of crazy the chinese are not tall but they love long wheelbase cars i have no clue why <laughs> now the thing is that uh, this lane keep assist really works well in fact all the systems in this car work quite well there it did not work right now whenever i praise it now it just disappoints me by not doing what i'm expecting it to do so anyways we will come to a halt hazard lights on and there is no point of having manual control over the gearbox because it doesn't let you hold on to a shift what's the point of having manual control yeah come on left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator hazard lights off some wheel spin finally red line slightly under 6500 rpm so the two sides actually available in eight variants yeah eight variants pricing starts at 31.93 lakhs goes all the way to 41.7 lakhs and this variant is actually priced at 36 lakhs which brings me to a bit of a problem here because the premium for the diesel is just unbelievable i can't believe hyundai is charging 4.25 lakhs more for the diesel so all the prices i mentioned are obviously on road mumbai so this is the top spec petrol which does not get all wheel drive option but the diesel also comes with front wheel drive and there's another variant for all wheel drive which comes at a premium of around 1.4 lakhs now this trim in the petrol which i'm driving right now is a top spec for the petrol price at 36 lakhs no problem now the diesel with the same uh, specs in terms of the features in terms of the variant the same trim level actually is priced at 4.25 lakhs more which is a significant premium for the diesel and hyundai also believes that diesels will account for larger sales probably that's why they have gone for the premium pricing or probably uh, the diesel engine is much more expensive for its turbo charge here the difference is much more because this is actually a naturally aspirated engine it's kind of an old engine uh, you know what when 
you experience this particular petrol engine in the Alcazar, you don't feel that bad. You think you find it like very peppy and all that stuff. There are two reasons for it. Firstly, the Alcazar is lighter. Okay, that is very beneficial because weight really pay, plays a huge role in terms of the performance of a vehicle. That's fine, accept it. Secondly, the Alcazar's diesel engine is not very powerful. It's a 1.5 liter unit. So when you compare that 1.5 liter diesel to the 2 liter petrol, you're like, hmm, 2 liter petrol is much better. So relatively, you're like, okay, the 2 liter petrol is better. Here, the 2 liter petrol is the same as the Alcazar, but this car is heavier. And secondly, the bigger issue is that the diesel is just so damn good so powerful and it also has all-wheel drive which also has multiple drive modes like mud sand and snow and it also has adaptive for the drive mode and whatnot so the diesel just turns out to be much better making the petrol feel a bit dated and slow yeah maybe a turbo would address things to a great extent you see steering is so light so easy to twirl and then taking a u-turn is also very effortless and then it immediately centers it centers so fast that you have to actually put your hand on the steering wheel to make sure that it doesn't center way too much or way too quickly and then you are able to take a quick u-turn as well so in terms of ride comfort technology features and all Hyundai has nailed it out of the park the pricing is on the premium side this is Hyundai's flagship this is the first car from Hyundai in India which gets ADAS functions the car looks very radical interior is fantastic quality is next level no denying that fact but you know they say diesel is a diesel is a diesel wait a second not they say i say that okay diesel is a diesel is a diesel is a diesel and the diesel is just so much better but comes at a premium and then we have such bad roads to encounter two drops of rains and the roads are totally broken quite concerning that uh, how fast roads break here which means that there's a reason why the sedans are getting extinct because you can't drive a sedan over this now see the ride is very comfortable here the tucson has no issue just gliding over this road surface this is actually based on a santa fe platform yeah modified version of the santa fe's platform this hyundai is top selling model globally as well and there yeah it's telling me someone is my light of sight so adas works so good in fact i had experienced adas at icat in delhi where hyundai done demonstrations and all very nice adas system fantastic i think one of the best i've seen in any car right now because it's not very intrusive it gives you some time and space also so it's like that girlfriend who loves you yet doesn't want to control you completely that is what this ada system is and i very much like it and i also like the fact that this car it doesn't egg you to push on it's like okay you drive comfortably you don't take stress you're not supposed to drive me fast because this is not what i like here i've actually changed this to drive and there the gear shift happened it's a bit slow the gear shifts are slow at full throttle they're slow when you're doing part throttle also so they're relatively slow only they're just not fast enough which you would expect it to be because come on at 36 lakh rupees you would expect a faster gearbox no denying that fact and uh, i'm really loving the displays especially you know the whole warnings and all in fact it has a road sign detection which will tell me what is the speed limit in a particular place it also tells me there's a school ahead and then it shows me a children crossing sign it's like school ahead children crossing ahead and all that which can get a bit irritating you can shut it off i think i've shut it off at the moment but it shows me a sign where it shows that road uh, like children are crossing and that's also very cool and nice yeah we're going to come to a halt hazard lights on quite show foot in our brakes no complaints there hazard lights off revving the motor and off we go so guys this is my vlog of the hyundai tucson quite a nice car i really like it i think hyundai has done a fab job now i hope they bring the santa fe back they also bring the palisade to india and then they just bring as many models as possible probably the genesis too that will be super duper cool too the collision warning has come i like the way the sound also comes it, it's not irritating but it's alerting enough if you like this vlog make sure to give the thumbs up that's the like button and also subscribe to the channel i will see you guys in the next video real soon bye bye